Okay, I'm not sure if I've chosen a bad time to make a video, but I'm going to do my best to try to get this done. This is a video that's going to tie in three different um, parts of prayer that I wanted to talk about um, from three different traditions, actually. One um, is Baha'i, one is Orthodox, and one is from a Sufi tradition. And this is actually... Um, a conversation that originally began with an Orthodox brother of mine who I stay up way too late on the phone. I think we both keep each other up too long, but um, it's always worth it. It's always a blessing. So when I had ever started studying about Sufism, just at different times in my life, um, because I had, you know, read the Quran like two times I remember, I think just three times over spotted areas, but definitely two specific times all the way through for sure. I, um, so I had found Sufism because of course, you know, being the mystical tradition of that faith, that would be interesting to me. So I came to really enjoy the writings of, I only really know how to say his first name, Bawa, and I've never even tried to say his last name. It's, and I don't really think it's his last name, but anyway, Muhayadin, yeah, Bawa Muhayadin. Okay, so anyways, he's actually a modern sheikh, and he, I think there's, he has a. Sorry for my phone again. Um, he has a a following or a group that um is in like I think it's Pennsylvania, and there's. Um, Master or whatever and like this was in like the 70s Th this particular talk the one that I'm about to talk to is read to you and I'll leave the link to it too it was given on the 18th of June in 75 um, I don't know if you want me to give you his background but um, usually he starts out all of his talks kind of he'll say like me I love you or because he speaks like it's hard to, anyway. So, <laughs> this particular talk he gave, um, oh wow, I've never noticed the rest of his name. Okay. Muhammad Rahim Bawa Muhayyadin. Okay. May God be pleased. That's sweet. Okay. So, here's his talk. He said, it's just a, a portion of it. He said, Say, Ilala Ilahu. Do not waste your breath. With every breath, say, La Ila Ilahu. Whenever, whatever time it is, you should never remain idle. Whether you are staying here or elsewhere, these words have to be said. They must be said with your breath. You do not have to make a sound. Your tongue should gently form the words within your mouth. You should say, la 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 hu. The outgoing breath, la la ha, other than you, nothing exists, should be drawn among this with awareness. Movement should occur at this time. The sound ilahu should draw in with awareness and wisdom implanted firmly within the call or your inner heart. Whatever the time or wherever the place, you must say this. Whether you are walking, lying down, awake, working, or sleeping, at all times the breath, these words, the remembrance, feeling, awareness, intellect, judgment, and wisdom should function continuously. Understanding should be attained through divine analytic wisdom, and every moment should be perceived. One should be aware of all the movements. The coming and going of each breath should be understood. It should be perceived through divine luminous wisdom, and all its sounds, explanations, and lights should be understood. Say it like this. Do not waste even a second. Thought, feeling, awareness, intellect, judgment, wisdom, divine analytic wisdom, and divine luminous wisdom should be aware of this. You should bring all seven states of consciousness together and recite these words. You should say these words whether you are sitting here or somewhere else. It is good to recite these words continuously no matter what other work you may be doing. Do not merely spend your time laughing. The breath should function with this remembrance of irrespective of the work you are doing. It must go on like this. As the breath continues to function this matter, you must acquire wisdom, God's actions, and his qualities. God's actions should become your actions, and you should also perform his duty. Please do this. 
Do not be idle. Do not sit in a corner and laugh or sit in the garden and gossip. Whatever you may be doing, this work should go on. Wherever you may be, this work should continue. These words should flow unceasingly into your inner heart through awareness and wisdom. Whether you are in the park or the backyard, whether you are on the left or the right, these words must keep resonating at all times. This prayer must go on. The work of uniting with God must go on at all times. You must do this. Each one of you must do this. You must not be idle for even one minute of your time. When you come here to listen to wisdom, your remembrance of God should continue. You should not come here, listen to the discourse, and hear words of wisdom. The rest of the time, wherever you may be, you must continue to say these words. You must continue to say these words without stopping. You must continue to do this work. This is the most important work you can do. If you do not do this and merely remain idle, there will not be any benefit. This work must go on at all times. When a discourse is being given here, you should come and listen. The rest of the time, you should stay where you are and do this work. Only then will the crop grow. Only then will the light shine. Only then will unity occur. Only then can we unite with God and do His duty. This cannot be achieved in any other manner. Do not waste your time. Do it, my children. Tell each child that this should be done. Each child should encourage another child and see that this work goes on. Two or three children can join together and say this. Call all who are idle and invite them to this. Just as one feeds an infant with milk and food, the children who know about this should feed it to others. The children who know this should feed the milk of God to other children. Give them God's milk to drink. Do not sit around thinking that you know how to do it. You must do it and encourage others to do it also. Do it like this. Do not waste time. There is very little time left. During this period, we have to do our duty and accomplish this work. My son, my daughter, pay attention to this. Some people listen to the discourses when they are spoken and are idle the rest of the time. That is not right. This is not the way to do things. It does not mean that you have to come here. You can be here, there, or anywhere, but you should do your work. When wisdom is being spoken, or when truth is being explained, you may come here, but in any case, you must do this work wherever you are. You must help other children grow, and you grow. You yourself must grow. It is in this one word, part pertains to the left, and part pertains to the right. Recite this word. This is the pure word. Nothing other than God exists. Only God exists. I was saying this yesterday that God is eternal. And this is what you, this is the way you invite with that eternal one. Do this. Only if you do this, it will be good morning. Otherwise, it is just a morning. Say it properly with determination. And then will it be a good morning for us. Okay. So that was very inspiring to me as 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 a Baha'i and I would take that into, I don't want to say the word consideration, but it, it, it was definitely a part of the way that I viewed things and um, something that was easy to incorporate into being a Baha'i because, you know, it does have that um, tradition as part of it. And even though Baha'is have their own prayers, you're always encouraged to pray prayers from other faiths that are meaningful to you. So it's kind of interwoven. So then, you know, when when I was no longer absolutely had cut off my, um, not only just my personal belief, but my actual membership, um, you know, with the Baha'i faith, I thought, oh, all of this is lost to me, you know. So not not even taking into consideration that, you know, there's the Jesus prayer that we have, right? And the more that I always go back and realize what was the most attractive to me, I always find it has its its original root in Christianity, in, in Orthodoxy. So I had always thought that that was the case specifically with the Jesus prayer, but then I even found something more specific um, that includes the description of the breath too. So here's what I was learning about. It's called, I don't even know if I'm going to say this right, Hes chasm prayer, hes chasm, or I don't even, of course I would put a chasm in there, sorry. Hes chasm, or chasm, or I don't know how to say it. Okay, and that 
it's a monastic tradition um, of bringing the chin into the chest and it has to do with a representation and a symbology of letting the mind sink into the heart and there's a wonderful video um, where Gambler talks about that and I'll probably link it too because it's I think almost maybe my my most favorite video of his um, ever when one is unable to do this in the required position the prayer of the heart should be practiced anyway while standing while walking while reclining while at work during any chore and possible while of sleep inhale while saying Lord Jesus Christ and then hold the breath at Son of God exhale at have mercy on me and hold the breath again at sinner and then inhale again Lord Jesus Christ and then Son of God so it goes on and on like that and um and you just keep repeating it and it's part of it's weird to be having a conversation on two levels at the same time so any way that you can include the Jesus prayer more in your day is always great and if just with your breath you even identify those not even saying those just be constantly calling um, it's it has it has amazing cell changing effects literally it changes you down through your DNA I believe anyway. all right so <laughs> thanks to Yusuf for um, pointing me towards this and um, I hope uh, this has helped you with your prayers and um, God blessings and peace on your heart take care